Hello and welcome to the first part of UTT AP and AC Basic Configuration. In this video, I'll show you how to configure an AP in FAT mode. UTT access points now includes WA1300N, WA1505N, WA1700N, WA1900N, WA2200N, and WA2500N. When we first install the AP, the default IP address of the AP is 192.168.1.253. Please make sure that the PC or laptop you use to log on the AP is in the same subnet with the AP. Open the web browser on your PC. Log on the web UI of the AP with 192.168.1.253. The default username and password are both admin in lowercase. Log in and we will see the main page of the web UI. Next, we should change the device mode. By default, Fit AP mode is selected. It is also known as the controller mode. An AP in Fit mode needs to be managed by an access controller. Fat mode is a standalone mode. Now let's look at the web UI to see how to change the AP into FAT mode. Click Device Mode. Select FAT AP in Device Mode. Click the Save button. The AP will restart after saving. In 90 seconds, the AP will transfer into FAT AP mode. Next, let's look at the LAN settings. On the LAN settings page, we can configure the LAN IP address, subnet mask, gateway IP address, controller IP address, and DNS server address on this page. The AP can obtain an IP address in two ways, static IP or DHCP. If we select static IP in connection type, we will be able to set a static IP for the AP. And if we select DHCP in connection type, the AP will obtain an IP address automatically from the DHCP server. If we wish that all the hosts connected to the AP to obtain an IP address from the AP, we should enable the DHCP server on the AP. Let's look at the demo. Click LAN. Select static IP or DHCP to configure an IP address for the AP. It is recommended to apply a static IP when the AP is in FAT AP mode, so that we can always manage it with the same IP address. In our demo, I'll keep the IP address of the AP as default. Click DHCP server. Check here to enable the DHCP server on AP. We can change the range of the DHCP pool and other parameters on this page. The second tab in DHCP server is Static DHCP. Static DHCP allows you to manually bind an IP address to a host's MAC address and thus that host will always obtain the same IP address. Click Add. We can configure a username for the host. Then enter its IP address and MAC address here. The third tab is DHCP Auto Binding. When DHCP Auto Binding is enabled, once a LAN host obtains an IP address from the AP, the AP will immediately bind this host's MAC address to the IP address it has obtained. Whenever the host connects to the AP, it will obtain the same IP address. If DHCP auto-deleting is enabled, the AP will automatically delete a DHCP auto-binding entry if the corresponding host releases the IP address or its lease expires. The last tab is DHCP client list. All the hosts that obtained an IP address from the AP will be displayed in this list. Next, we need to configure the wireless settings on the AP. There are six pages on the wireless menu. First is device mode. We have done this already, so we'll just skip it. Next is basic. All the basic wireless configurations are made on this page. Next is security. There are four security modes, none, WP, WPA, WPA2, and WPA PSK, slash WPA2 PSK. 
Nexus Mac filtering. It enables us to control the access to the wireless network by MAC address. Nexus Advanced. All the advanced wireless options are listed here. Usually, we should keep them as default. The last one is Client List. All the wireless clients are listed on this page. Let's take a look. Click Wireless. Click Basic. Check this box to enable wireless. There are four operation modes. In AP mode, the AP works as the normal access point. Repeater mode, bridge mode, and lazy mode are many WDS modes. In repeater mode, the AP can connect to other wireless devices in bridge mode, repeater mode, or lazy mode. And at the same time, it can provide connectivity for wireless clients. We should configure the BSSID of the primary AP, or to say the AP we wish to connect to, here. In bridge mode, the AP can connect to other devices in repeater mode or lazy mode and share the network with wired hosts. However, wireless clients will not be able to connect to the AP. Also, configure the BSSID of the primary AP here. In lazy mode, the AP can connect to other wireless devices in bridge mode or repeater mode. And at the same time, it can provide connectivity for wireless clients. But first, we need to configure the BSSID of this AP on the primary AP. In all three WDS modes, the security mode here must match with the primary AP. In our case, we just need a normal access point, so we select AP mode. We can select different wireless modes, regions, channels, channel width, and modify SSID on this page. Different regions have different channel range. For example, ETSI, which is for Europe, has 1 to 13, while FCC, which is for the US, has channel 1 to 11. If you want to hide your SSID, just uncheck the Enable SSID Broadcast box here. This is the 2.4G settings, while the 5G settings are basically the same, except that there are different wireless modes, channels, and channel widths. We can also enable automatic WDS under 5G and scan an SSID to connect. But always remember to disable the DHCP server and change the LAN IP address of this AP to make sure that there is no IP address conflict. Next, click Security. Select security modes here. WEP is an obsolete and insecure mode. It is highly recommended not to use it. If you're under a radio server, use WPA, WPA2. Select it. Select your WPA mode. Select the encryption method. Enter the radio server IP address here and configure the radio port here. Then the shared secret key. If there is not a radio server, please use WPA PSK, WPA2 PSK. Modify your wireless password in the pre shared key field. Next, click MAC filtering. If we want to only allow certain devices to access the network, select only allow MAC addresses listed below. If we wish to block the access of some devices, select only block MAC addresses listed below. Then we can click Add to add target devices. Remember to check Enable MAC Address Filtering so that this function can take effect. Next, click Advanced. RTS threshold specifies the package size above which an RTS CTS handshake will be performed before sending the packet. The packets larger than the specified fragmentation threshold will be fragmented before transmission. Beacon interval specifies the time interval between beacons. The AP periodically broadcasts beacons at a specified interval to synchronize the wireless network. DTIM interval determines how often the beacon contains a delivery packet indication message. RF power specifies the power of the wireless transmission. Max clients threshold specifies the maximum number of clients allowed to connect to the AP. 
When client isolation is enabled, all wireless clients connected to the AP will not be able to visit each other. Short preamble can improve network performance. Clear the checkbox to enable long preamble, which can ensure compatibility with some old 802.11b devices that require the long preamble, but it will slightly reduce throughput at high data rate. Enable WMM to prioritize traffic of multimedia applications for devices that support WMM. Last is Client List. All the wireless clients are listed on this page. We can click Filter All and add all the clients to the Mac filtering list. Now the AP is successfully configured and we will be able to connect to it. That's all for UTT AP and AC Basic Configuration Part 1, Bat AP. For more information, please feel free to go to www.utdglobal.com, which is our official website. As always, you can contact us by sending an email to support at uttglobal.com. I hope this video is informative to you and I'd like to thank you for watching.